this scene was quickly created in Blender in just an evening using the help of the new Dream Texture workflow. I'm gonna show you how. Alright, to begin the process, I use a human for scale and quickly blocking out the main seed objects of various size. At this stage, all I needed to do was experiment with the objects on the scenes and give them the correct starter shape for my team, which is a nice cave. The style for the ice cave doesn't need to be too realistic. I'm going for the plane of realism and stylization here, so generally speaking, all I needed to do during this stage is to have fun. But if you are already familiar with the blocking out stage, then you can go ahead and skip to the sculpting phase. Now back to the blocking out. For the best efficiency, I decided to put most of the work on the object that will be visible in the concept shot instead of the other part, such as this gate or portal right here. And for the next addition to the ice cave, I want to put some crystal in it to further amplify the fantasy aspect of the concept. Then I created a few more crystal with various shapes to break up the repetitiveness with just a few simple vertices changes. Now to create a part that will lead the viewer's eye from the camera to the portal. This part is just another help with guiding what the audience see. Once I'm done with the first stage of the block out, I created a backup of the scene before heading to the next phase. In this second blockout stage, I want to give it a sharp look on the edge to help with the sculpting phase in the objective of creating an ice cave wall. This is similar to low poly modeling. So the next time you do low poly modeling and thinking that this is all you can do, then you might want to think again once the next phase starts. Now that I'm done with the blocking out phase, I joined in the blocks and gave them a remesh modifier which will effectively merge all the shapes within it together. The remesh modifier is quite powerful for this pre-scoping phase since it can merge any shapes within it in real time, allowing you to edit and add more primitives to your mesh before the scoping phase begins. Okay. Now it is time to sculpt some ice wall. The main brushes I'll be using here will be the block brush, motor plane scrape, and the draw sharp brush. The main step I use for it is to create a subtracting block by holding down control while using the block brush, then sharpening the edge using the motor plane scraping. The draw sharp brush can then be used to further amplify the edge of the icy block and as well as drawing more vines on the wall. Once I'm done with the wall, I started using the same steps for all the parts of the scene. I chose the main scope from the camera viewpoint to control what I want the scene to look like from this specific perspective instead of fully scope the whole piece from multiple angles. There are parts that should look like a natural formation and parts that should look like it was formed from human hand which should be toned down in terms of randomness in the shape but instead should have imperfection on the surface or the edge instead such as this portal and the portal gate Now I am beginning to give the scene some color to test the look before generating some texture in Dream Texture Current look I am going for is to have a combing ice cave of cyan color with some orange contrast on the side to create that warm feeling in a cold environment. Now that the lighting test is done, it's time to generate some texture using the new Dream Texture plugin. Dream Texture is basically stable diffusion but built into Blender. I see this as a tool more than a generator for the final product. Before this, I had to search far and wide on the internet for textures and manually plug each and every one of them into Blender to see which one fit. But now, I get the comfort of quickly browsing through an endless possibilities of textures. Currently, I am generating an icy wall texture in the style of NPR, non-photorealistic, which will then be applied directly onto the object with projection mapping, meaning that you don't have to ungrab your mesh for the texture to have the correct look. Although the applied texture still have the smeared and disfigured look sometimes, 
the advantage we have here is comfort. As you can see here, I have already iterated through a lot of possible textures, picking the best one out of all of them, like picking food in an infinite buffet. But there is a disadvantage. They are limited to a low resolution. My current VRAM can handle anything below the 832 range, anything more than that, and it might crash. They might be low resolution, but there is always a way to enhance their look through some node trick in Blender, which I will show you shortly. The material generated does not have any other map beside the main color map, so I had to improvise with the color ramp node and block them into the roughness and bump node. Then, I adjusted the value until they have the look I'm going for. This might not be the most optimal way for a realistic scene, but from a distance, they still look decent, especially for a scene where I'll be doing some editing and pan over on later. I then spawn the glass shaders and block the color map onto it, then mix the main shaders with the glass shader together to create that nice mid between a solid wall of icy color and glassy effect. An extra useful effect for the wall is volume. I use volume to help creating depth in the wall as well as lighting it up by a small amount just for the fantasy aspect. But since the plugin is quite new, there are still some missing function on it like the CFG scale to control the stylization, adjustable sample amount, seed, and most importantly, auto saving of the textures once they are created. Currently, you have to manually save them, but hopefully the creator will keep supporting this great add-on. Now, back to the scene. I added in a volume effect to help creating the mood of the scenes and scattering the light sources especially the one in the middle where I want the audience to focus on the most. Adjusting the beam shape value can help in focusing the light to create a sharp cut ray effect, very useful in creating that highlight lighting effect. Lighting preview seems good, now it is time for feel of the final step, such as creating this portal texture. One final trick for the material is to use an ambient occlusion node as a factor for the mid shaders, meaning that while AO generate in real time, Blender will use that black and white value to miss whatever shaders I want to miss. What I just did here is missing the final icy wall shader with the bumping snow shader using real time ambient occlusion as a factor. Now that whenever I put any mesh close together, they will also blend. Finally, I made some spiky cave icicle for that extra cavey effect. Then I went ahead and finalized the lighting. It is important to remember that for a cave scene like this, where you normally have one tone of color throughout the entire shot, it is useful to have some contrast color like this orange point light or glowing cave crystal. And also to break up the harshness of the glowing crystal effect, I use a radiant texture to control the emission strength of those crystal. You can input a higher number into the white color of the cardogram to control how bright the crystal will glow. Now for a few of the final preview of the lighting and few of the final changes. I hit the render. I also exported the diffuse color pass from Eevee to help with the pan over face. The diffuse color pass helped with the pan over in preserving the texture that was lost either to the volume or the glass effect. All the thing I needed to do for the pan over part is to paint some snowy highlight on the crystal using a brush with a nice texture. I paint the initial layer first, then I'll add a mask to further refine the edge. The brush I chose had a nice snowy effect with enough variation to not make them too repetitive. The snowy highlight doesn't need to have a really dense amount of detail, since I will be blending them in later. They just need to have a nice balance between 3D and 2D. 
Then, I draw a slight amount of snow onto the surface of the wall and begin the masking part. Using the same brush, but this time, I will call any part that is not around the edge. Some may say that these effects are still achievable in Blender. I agree. But it is still more comfortable in Photoshop in terms of control and steps to achieve them. That is one of the balance between 2D and 3D. In Photoshop, I can fine tune every crystal I want without having to have a lot of duplicate material like what I plan to do in Blender. Now, to blend those snowy painted layers to the underlying layers, I will use this nice and efficient function or blend if, highly useful for finally blending the layers. After blending of the snowy paint over is done, I tested out some possible color grading options before heading to the effect of the portal. The effect I apply onto the portal is an abstract effect, like energy, flame, but highly abstractified to give the feeling of a magical force. Then, to put the effect into perspective, I use the warp function in Photoshop to edit them to look right. Without some warp editing, the effect would look quite out of place. I added an extra layer of particle floating around the portal and the effect for more detail. Then I added in the fog all around the scenes to further amplify the atmospheric look. Once the fog is done, all I needed to do is to use Blend If to finally blend them to the whole scene. Now, the last thing to do is to color grade the scenes and done. All of this within an evening, excluding the time needed to edit this video. Dream Texture surely made the process much quicker by allowing you to seamlessly do everything within Blender. Highly useful for concept art. Alright, see you next time.